You're looking at Radio City Music Hall, first round of the NFL Draft, just about 24 hours from now. And before that does happen, we're going to put Lige Duzable of the Jets on the clock. He's the Jets' defensive tackle, and as you'll soon find out, we've got a lot of us here on set. There's now five of us. We're all right. together. And Lige, thanks so much for coming in. Before we get to the Jets specifically, let's, let's talk this NFL draft and the big question right now, who's going number one overall? Who do you think it's going to be? It's, it's definitely going to be J Jadavian Clowney from uh, South Carolina. The guy has um, so much talent, and uh, he's, he's still so young, and uh, his, his roof, his ceiling is not even, he hasn't even, you know, begun to, like, touch the, the, the ceiling of his talent. Um, the guy is a traditional 4-3 end, but I think the Texans will take him, and they'll find a way to get him on the field and, you know, use his, his, his talent. How about the lightning rod from Texas A&M, Johnny Manziel? <laughs> How good do you think he'll be and successful in the National Football League? I think he'll, he'll be good, but I don't think he should start right away. I think he's a guy that needs to come in behind a, a veteran quarterback and, and learn the system and uh, learn behind a, a veteran guy, and uh, I think he'll be fine. All right, so break down this Jets draft for us. they got a lot of pay, huge, huge draft uh, for Izzig. What do you think the needs are, and how do they go about filling them? Well, I think a lot of people think we're going to take a receiver, a tight end first round, or maybe a corner. And um, I, I would like for us to get, a, you know, Ebron or the kid from LSU, Odell Beckham. And uh, Justin Gilbert, I don't think he's going to be there, but he would be a, a great addition to our defense. So you think offense first? Is that what... Um, I, I'm assuming offense first. I don't know. I don't make those decisions, but that's what I'm assuming. And you guys are set at defensive tackle, right? <laughs> you, can never, you can never be set. You never know in this league, man. So uh, whatever Isaac does, you know, I'm behind him. He's a great GM. So we hear a lot about Rex's reputation as a defensive coach. From your inside knowledge there, is he one of the best in that way you've ever seen or, or played for? Oh, most definitely. I, I love playing for Rex. The guy brings a lot of energy every day to the practice field and to the meetings. You know, every day we go out there, we know what we're doing. We know what we're facing that week. And, uh, and like, the players just love playing for him, man. He's a player's coach. You got a similar situation coming into camp this year. Last year it was Mark Sanchez or Geno Smith. Yeah. Now it's Michael Vick or Geno Smith. How do you think the guys are going to react to it, and, and who do you think is going to be the starting quarterback week one? Well, the thing is we've been through this before, so I think everybody knows how to handle it. Um, Mike Vick already came out and said Geno's the starting quarterback, and he's number two right now. And uh, it's great to have two guys that can compete and both can play at a high level in this, in this league. How about, how about your story? I mean, undrafted free agent, right? Mm -hmm. Coming out, we've seen guys in great stories. You're one of them. You've been in the league for seven years. How difficult is it, you know, not a first, second, third round draft choice, but being able to make headway in the National Football League and stick? Yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not really difficult for me because I always have been the person that went out and worked hard. And in my mind, I really wanted this. So my dad used to tell me when I was younger, if you want it, how bad do you really want it? So I always, you know, stuck, stuck to my guns, worked hard, tried to outwork everybody else. And now I'm in year seven. So if you don't get, if you don't get drafted uh, on draft day, you just got to stick with it. And Liget, you were projected to go in the draft. You were projected to yeah. go third through fifth round. Exactly. So how difficult was draft weekend for you not being picked? And, and how much did it maybe motivate you to get where you are? Oh, definitely motivated me every mo even more. Like, I wanted every team to feel like they should have picked me. So when I go on that field, that's how I play. Um, it was a difficult weekend for me. You know, you're just staring at the phone every two, five minutes. When the phone rings and it's, it's not a team, it's somebody else, you're like, why are you calling my phone? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, was, it, was, it was, I won't say it was painful. It was an experience, and I think it made me a better man. All right, we asked you about Manziel. How about Bortles? Yes. What do you think, you know, you're a fellow knight. When you look at Blake exactly. Bortles and what he did collegially, how do you think he's going to translate national football? League. A lot of people are comparing him to Roethlisberger. Yeah, definitely. That's the comparison I would give him. Um, I think the thing that's different between Bortles and a lot of these other quarterbacks in the draft is he actually was in a pro-style offense. The guy has prototypical size. He's 6'5", 232, can uh, make so many throws. He, he, he uh, leads receivers open. And also, uh, when plays break down, like Roethlisberger, he makes plays down the field. DJ Duzabold, defensive tackle for the New York Jets. Thanks so much for your insight and time. Thank you.